Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany. I'm a tipsy artist and we are going live today with our beautiful painting, Life's a Beach. All right, so let me show you the model. This is our beautiful model that we have to start with. Kind of have to just float it through the frame here. Okay, so there it is. All right, and then we have our tray done over here. And I am going to talk a little bit uh, very specifically about the trays, give you some pointers on that. And then the rest of the supplies, let me show you everything that comes with our awesome kit. So we sell all the stuff to make this super easy. So we have a little palm tree for you and little flamingo, surfboard, and the van. All right, so all those pieces are there. And then of course they can come with brushes and paints. And then of course your canvas here. And I've got all my supplies laid out. I've got a bucket of water and a rag, so I'm all ready to go. Now let me talk about the trace a little bit. We've got a little bit of some foreground issues happening here. So um, what you wanna think about is everything that comes in the very front. So I've got a little flamingo in the very front and then a surfboard here that comes just behind that and then the van and then the palm trees. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I've got a little scratchy, I don't know, like I swallowed something wrong. <clears throat> okay. I'm ready now, okay. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so let me talk about this trace one more time. So as you're placing this down here, I don't know if you can kind of see, I'm gonna show you my oopsies. Sometimes it's good to learn from our, our little oopsies in life. So I had to kind of do a little bit of a repaint over this because I ended up having lines that came through. So if you're using pencil, this is when it's really good that you can go ahead and erase some of this out and eliminate some of that so that the surfboard comes in front of the van and then the flamingo actually comes in front of the surfboard. Hello, Kathy, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, so that's basically, you'll be awesome if you just use a pencil and you can erase it. That's why I say to go ahead and start um, with, hello, <laughs> yay, yeah, me too, here's a little heart sign, <laughs> um, so let's see here, when you are doing this, start with a pencil, lots of forgiveness on that, and then you can erase, and then, to help give you a little more confidence with that sharpie line, then you can go over what you know will still be there, so if I had done that, which I didn't, <laughs> Oops, I got in a hurry, but I should have done that. And then I would have had all the right lines right out in front. All right, so, but I went ahead and just painted over it so that it's all, you know, good now. So there's our beautiful trace. And then let's go ahead and get started with all of the background first. So I'm going to start with a pretty large brush here. I'll be using my Big Daddy brush. So here's Big Daddy. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up a nice big dollop of the blue, and then a nice big dollop of the white, and then a nice big dollop of the green. Hello, yes. Hey, you know what though? We do have one show in Enid. I miss seeing y'all too. Um, we do have a show at Ringwood that we're able to do. So I think the Marriott has some pretty strict rules with their shows there, so they're not able to do it yet, but we are having a show. We just had one at Ringwood. They've got AC. It's really nice and cool. Huge event center there. Lots of room to spread out. And then we'll be coming back there on July 10th too. And we're having them on Friday nights. So it's, you know, it's not a big deal to drive out there because it's a weekend night. So that makes it a little bit easier. All right, so let's talk about our turquoise here. We have the blue the green and the white. Blue, green, and white, and that makes our beautiful turquoise. All right, so we've got it all mixed up. I also keep a little bit of white off to the side as well, so I'll be pushing that back and forth in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to place this into the background. Did y'all notice I painted little clouds on my, <laughs> my background? It was bothering me. It was just too plain, and I always had all this space up here. My husband's making fun of me because I've been painting everything. So I start looking at it, and I, I just feel like I have to paint it. I can't just let it be there not having enough paint on it. 
All right, so you can see here I've got some palm trees. I'm going to go ahead and relax and just kind of paint through that because I know that my Sharpie will kind of bleed through that and I'll be able to see it. Yes, I need my painting therapy too. Of course, I have it all the time. <laughs> I do it every day, several times a day. All right, so I'll sweep this back and forth in a horizontal stroke, just back and forth. Now, I did just go ahead and pick up a little bit of white. First thing you notice, yay, good. Yeah, I needed some cute little clouds back there. I also painted my lamp, my lampshade. I thought it was um, kind of dated. It was... Well, it was kind of dated. It was like grandma's lamp back here. We, I think we got it at Goodwill. So it was, uh, and no offense to grandma's out there. <laughs> like, I'll probably be one soon. No, I, that, no, if my daughter's one listening, <laughs> she's like, nobody's, my kids are like, well, they're old enough. They could, they could actually have children, but well, yeah, they could. My son's like, he's 16. So no, no, no. You don't even think about my daughter. She'll be 21 this summer. So but yeah. All right, so here we go. We're starting to work in all of our sky and then I'll take it back and forth with my turquoise and then my white, just sweep that back and forth. Now I will have to start to concentrate a little bit more and do my cut in work. So then I wanna go ahead and take the brush and hold it more on the line edge like this. So then I will go ahead and just push it around the van shape here. If it gets too small and curvy, but it's getting there. I have to switch over to a smaller brush. This is still fairly manageable. A little corner to get into here, so I'll go ahead and turn the brush over to the side. Use a little bit of that white to kind of sweep in there. And then again here on the side, just kind of sweep this in. So I did my cut in work with that line edge, just like this. Then when I pulled out from there, I lay that brush over on the side and then I just pull that back out into the rest of the canvas. And of course, if you're doing this at home, you can also, it's optional, but you can certainly paint the sides of this if you want. That does help you hang it on the wall without a frame, I will say that. But if you are going to frame it, then you don't even have to worry about it. All right, I'm getting right next to a line edge here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that brush and just Again, remember to hold it back to that line edge. That will help you do that cut in around that shape. And I know we have palm trees over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sweep through those because I know that my Sharpie will bleed through on that and I'll be able to still see them. And then I'll continue on my Cut and work here all the way around. And then down to the base. I'm actually just taking this lovely blue all the way around the shape of the van. So not being very literal here with the color here at the base of it. It's just a really nice contrast too. So I like this blue, which is a little bit more like a turquoise color. I like this coming all the way around the shape. All right, so I'm noticing a few little brush strokes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more sweeps here on the side of the brush to kind of feather all those out. Make it look a little bit more like a soft blend happening here. And then again, up here at the top, just a few more smooth strokes to feather out any really noticeable brush strokes that look a little bit choppy in the background. 
and then I think we're in great shape. Okay, so beautiful. Yes, I was gonna see, I was checking, I was checking my windows, I wasn't sure. I thought, hmm, do I need to have sky through here? But I actually did that a different color. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that just the way it is. Next up, we can do the inside of our van here. And I'm noticing that I forgot to do a few little details. So this is where our ruler comes in handy. So I have my little ruler here. And I need to make sure that I do the top part of the van. So I may have to come back in here and touch up my blue again, but I wanna go ahead and place this right about here. All right, so I want this line to go all the way across. I'm gonna do it right here, but I'm gonna be really careful I don't touch that wet blue paint. Because if I touch the wet paint, it'll kill the Sharpie, so we don't want that to happen. All right, we have a line there. I did pretty good there. All right, let's see. All right, I've also got just a little bit of a line happening here. I guess I could use the ruler on that too if I want to be really careful. I don't want to drive any OCD people nuts with a not perfectly straight line. That could be bad. <laughs> it would be very um, frustrated with me throughout this process. And then I actually let that one be solid. And then let's do one more line in here. All right. Okay, and then I've got this, I'm gonna have to freehand this, but this is just kind of a little doodad up here at the top of the van. And then I think I'm good. Yeah. All right, so painting time again. All right, so a few little details that I added in. Now I want to go ahead and do a really beautiful bright orange in here. So I will switch over to my Mama brush. So here's Mama, orange. Now, one thing about orange that's kind of frustrating is that it's very translucent by nature. So there's a, little, there's a few little tricks that you can do, partly technique and then also partly a mix here without really changing the color too much. So if I add just a teeny amount of yellow to it, it brightens it up quite a bit, still maintains that wonderful orange quality, but it also helps it cover so much better on top of the canvas. See, if you were to take white and put it in there, it would also really help it cover better. However, it would take it to a peach color. And I do want that really pretty bright orange color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my bright lemon yellow in there. And see if I add the gold, I'm not gonna do that this time, uh, but that, that takes it to more of like a UT orange, UT, that's a football term, okay? It's not like a, uh, a technical color term. And that's Texas UT, by the way, that's the Texas Longhorns. I'm from Texas, so I still have all these color references with that. So, I graduated from Texas Tech, so we just had basic red there. But we didn't care much for UT. <laughs> and you know what? That hasn't changed a whole lot since I've moved to Oklahoma. It's still kind of the same. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and place this color over on the side. But, however, if you are from UT, or if you went to UT, Austin, we love you. Because you know what? Y'all might be painting this right now because you saw the orange van and you're probably all excited. Oh, look at that, UT orange van. It is a great school. And you know what? Matthew McConaughey goes there, so that's good. Teaches an acting class. Wears a fanny pack. <laughs> Made fanny packs come back in style. I was actually really thankful for that because I really love fanny packs, but I was always a little embarrassed to wear them. And now he was the first to really bring it back, so that made me happy. And then I think Kim Kardashian started wearing them, so then, you know, of course, now we can all wear our fanny packs with pride, you know, so. 
I still wore mine even though I just, there comes a point in life where you just, you just don't care. You just do what you need to do. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and continue pinning in all of our beautiful orange. And remember I mixed that bright lemon yellow in there. And I'm trying to be really careful around this little headlight happening. And then we'll go ahead and continue filling this in. That gets super T90 in there, so I need to go ahead and shift gears to a smaller brush. I will use my little bit to go ahead and get into that space. And I want to go ahead and lay it as much on the side as I can. So it gets a little awkward in there, but I'm trying to maintain the thickness of the paint. And I forgot to talk to you all about techniques, so let's talk about that right now. So if you hold the brush more like a pencil, like this, you'll get a really heavy hand and it thins the paint out dramatically and you see lots of brush strokes. So in fact, it'll even dig off paint. You can see how I just took away all that paint. And that's just simply by changing how I held the brush. So if you wanna have this nice thick coverage, just to go ahead and maintain holding that brush over to the side, parallel to the canvas, we're just, we'll reapply that now. Kind of feels like when you put on fingernail polish, how you have to really just be very intentional about placing that paint over on the side. How do you have everybody? Let's see if anybody new is on. All right, so we've got Jody, Heather, Denise. How do y'all? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue placing this on the side. And by the way, if you're on and I did not say hi to you, I'm so sorry I can't see your name anymore. There's always a lot of people on and I'm only allowed to see just a few names. All right, so here we go. We're finishing this out. Again, this is my orange and my lemon yellow. Mix those two together so that they will have much better coverage on the canvas. And then I've got a little tiny area right in there. And I do need to deal with that, but I need a smaller brush. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put Mama in the water. You also want to watch your brushes, make sure that when you're not using them, that they do go just right into the water because the acrylic paint can actually set up and dry uh, within less than five minutes sometimes, and it can ruin a brush. All right, so I think it's easier to apply this paint in a horizontal stroke because again, we're having to really make sure we hold that brush over to the side. And so I have to use my little buddy brush now and so I've got my orange and I've got my yellow mixed together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this brush and just hold it on the side in this tiny little area. This gives me a longer stroke in here with more control, because you can just imagine the other way I'd have to be doing teeny tiny little brush strokes all the way down and it would create kind of a really choppy feel. So I'm trying to get the smoothness happening with this stroke. So I'm gonna hold it over to this side, parallel to the canvas. So it's easier to go ahead and just turn the canvas here. All right, so that's beautiful. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn it back. I wanna make sure I'm still in frame. Yes, awesome. It's good. Right there. Okay. Yay. And Rolinda's here now. Hello, Rolinda. Happy beach day. Life's a beach. <laughs> Actually, more people feel like life's a beach than happy beach day, I'm sure. <laughs> so, all right. So let's see. I have a lovely surfboard that I need to go ahead and paint into now. We're still doing our color blocking. Uh, so this is where we just get that nice foundational work happening in here. So my surfboard will be a little bit of white and a little bit of the gold. 
Howdy! Hello, hello! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come back in with another clean mama. Here we go. And we got a little bit of white, a little bit of gold. I'm gonna lighten up my gold quite a bit with a lot more white here. This will be the color of my surfboard. All right, so I'm getting a nice mix on this. All right, and then I will go ahead and paint into this shape. So as I'm coming around the line edge, I can go ahead and just turn that brush over to the side. Hey, no worries about being late. <laughs> All good. Yesterday was a crazy day for me. Just in terms of, I almost had to have Joe start the class. That would have been interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. For those of you who know my husband, he is quite sassy, as I like to say. There's no telling what he would have said. All right, so we've got our gold and our white. We're gonna just push this back and forth. Okay, let's work on that line edge again. Get this all in place. Do that edge. And then I wanna be able to go all the way down through the bottom of the canvas here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out just like this and then make this line edge right through here. And then I'll continue filling this in. I'm turning the brush over to the side, parallel to the canvas. This allows me to have much better coverage over the surface here. It gets kind of tiny in here. May have to switch to a smaller brush here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do as much as I can with the bigger brush. Um, question is, can my husband paint as well as I do? He's actually much better than I am. <laughs> yeah, here's the difference in us. So he is so good that he doesn't relate very well to the process of having any kind of struggle with the process, and so he's not a very um, not a very patient teacher. So teaching's not his thing, but he is an amazing artist. So, hello, Sean, and hello, Heather, and hello, Christopher. <laughs> All these new people in here. So yeah, sometimes people that are so good at art are not very good teachers because they have no um, empathy with any kind of struggle and dealing with beginners at all. So that's kind of where he is at. He is at. He just he doesn't have any connection to that at all. So teaching is not his thing, but. He is funny and he does say funny, smart alecky things and he would probably tell y'all jokes. <laughs> and hello, Audrey. <laughs> All right, so it got to be too tiny in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a little bit brush and I will mix in a little bit of gold and a little bit of white. Do that mix again, I'm running a little bit low. And here's a little bit and I'll go ahead and start to work in around all these little curves because I need to work in and around my little flamingo. So I have to have the smallest brush to get in and around this little shape. And then I wanna kind of feather it back into the background, make sure it has a nice soft blend into that space. So first I hold it more like a pencil and do the detail work around those shapes and then I want to make sure and know that it has a nice soft blend and that it belongs into that space there. All right, so we are good on our surfboard. Okay, and let's see. Now I need to do a lot of gray work, have a lot of gray happening here. And today I know I've got the little white top here. I'm actually going to let the white of my canvas be my white. 
Let that stay just the way it is. And I'll go ahead and get a little bit of this light gray going. So I get a little bit more white over here off to the side. And then a little bit of black too, not very much. So I need a little buddy brush here. Actually, I'll use a mom again for just a little bit. We've got, I try to use as big of a brush as I can, as much as I can into these spaces, just because it covers better. But I'll add a tiny little touch of black here into the white. And that gives me a really pretty light gray. But again, a little touch of black into the white. All right, and that gives me my really pretty light gray. All right, so here we go. We've got our mama. And let's go ahead and work into these little shapes here. I have all of these done in gray. And I can just go ahead and turn it over to the side and get as close to those line edges as I can. If it does make you feel a little more comfortable, you can always turn the brush a little bit to the pencil side to do your cut-in work and then fill in. I'm actually enjoying doing the cut-in work on this particular space just by holding it to the side and just getting as close as I can right next to that edge. To me, that gives me a little bit more precision. And it just helps me to be a bit more cautious when I get right up next to that edge. And then I'll do the same thing here, and then I'll just kind of pull down into the larger surface area. And then I'll pull out from this side. And then let's start up here at the front. Also got a bumper down here I need to work in and some tires. All right, so I have, <clears throat> this needs to be gray, got a little bit more happening here. I need to work back to my little buddy brush Pick up more of that light gray and then just go ahead and place this into the bumper. So I'll use it, you know, kind of like, again, this is that pencil hold again. Use that brush that way to go ahead and do our cut in work. And then turn it over to the side to go ahead and fill this in. and then just lightly feather it out by turning this brush over to the side here. And then I've got a little bit of this bumper happening here too. All right, there's, and I got a little tiny amount right there. By the way, our trash is getting picked up right now, so I don't know if y'all can hear that. Oh, the beauty of live video, you know, just all those raw, sincere, authentic moments, <laughs> like the trash. <laughs> All right, we have this little gray accent here. All right, good job, good job, woo. All right, now let's do our little tire, but I want that to be a little bit darker, so I'll add a little bit more black to this make a darker charcoal gray so it's a bit contrasting. I just didn't want the harshness of the black on this painting. I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle and soft. So still look like a dark tire, but not. I didn't want that harsh black line there. So again, let's do a tiny more touch of black. I'm gonna make this just a really dark charcoal. All right, that's pretty much right where I want it to be. And then I'll go ahead and start to fill into this tire shape. Take this all around. Again, just the trash. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear that. It's super loud to me, but. And this is my little buddy brush again. And I just, you know, turn it in that circular pattern. 
Now this one's really tiny, just a little reference here of it. A little tiny amount. And then I forgot a little piece of my bumper. No, that's the, oh, that's the surfboard. I gotta, I gotta fix that. It's like, what is that? Yeah, that's the surfboard coming in front and I just missed it. All right, oops, <laughs> here we go. All right, little body brush again. I'm gonna use that surfboard color again, our gold and our white, and I need to get that little guy right there. I think what threw me off is I had another line there that I should have covered up and I forgot. I didn't get that one, I didn't see it. All right. So here we go. So that makes more sense. And I promise I won't have a legless flamingo forever. We'll fix that later too. <laughs> All right, so we've got bumper, tires, surfboard. Now we need to do our cute little pink flamingo. All right, so I will be mixing up some white and red, white and red. And I will be using my, I need to use my little bit brush for this. So here is a little bit. This is the smallest brush we've got, liner brush. I've got my white, a little bit of red. Mix those two together. I kind of want my flamingo to be pretty light, light pink. All right, and I need to do a quick little twist into my paint, kind of twist it out. That will give me a nice fine point. And then I can go ahead and work into these tiny little curves here. I'm also seeing a tiny little area that needs a little bit more touch of the surfboard color. It's kind of hard to see, but right there in that little tiny area is a little bit of the surfboard peeking through, so I will have to come back in and get that. So let me see here. Let's just do that right now. I don't want to forget. All right, so I've got my little bit brush, even really tiny one. See that? And then I'll just get this part right in here. Because that's just a little bit of that surfboard that comes through where the neck separates out from the body. All right. Now we shall continue on with our little flamingo here. And we'll take this all the way around that shape. Still doing our little bit of cut in work, getting around those little curves. And then we'll just fill all this in with that paint. Okay, so we have that color blocking done. Now we need to work on a little bit of our color blocking for our beautiful palm trees here. And I will be teaching a, a couple different ways. Howdy! Yes, Cincinnati! <laughs> welcome, welcome. And howdy from Guthrie, Guthrie, Oklahoma. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so if you do not have brown paint, and for example, on our kit, does not actually come with brown, so let's talk about another little creative mix that we can do here. So I'm going to use my cadmium red, and you can actually go with like a crimson color, add a little bit of black to that, so a little bit of black mixed in with my cadmium red looks just like a brown for the most part. Cause that's a really warm red. So again, I add a little bit of black to it and that starts to look just like a brown, like a dark chocolate brown there. So that is the mix on that. Again, black with cadmium red. And then I'll go ahead and pull this into my palm tree. And this is my little buddy brush. All right, so I've got the main shape here. Yep, 
use my templates to do this. And when we do this at first, I'm going to show you kind of a free-handed ways, uh, free-handed way to do like all the leaves first. Uh oh, are y'all back? It almost am I getting long-winded for Facebook? <laughs> Somebody tell me you're still there. It almost cut me off. I feel like you're still there, but. All right, so I've got my trees that I'm doing here. These are my palm trees, just working in the base. Hold the brush like a pencil. Okay, good, I saw a little heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold like a pencil, do the line work, and then I'll just fill this in. And then what I'll do in here is I'll make a little reference to some of those little coconuts in there. Hello, Misty from Kansas. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do like a couple circles or three circles uh, for the little coconut. So I take my little buddy brush and I press down and I do a little twist and the bristles will spread out and I'll make a little circle. So that's gonna be like little coconuts here. So I'll do a few of those. And I'll do that again over here on this side. All right, way to go. And then what I wanna do next is go ahead and come out with the little lines. And hi from Miss Gogi, welcome. <laughs> so now I'm going to use the line edge of the brush and then I'll basically just take this out in like a thin curved line that comes into each one of these little sections and I can still see it I'm going to bring the canvas a little bit closer to you so you can see how my sharpie work is kind of bleeding through and I have a reference so that I can still see where it's at let me make sure it's still in frame So I'm coming out into each one of these little sections here, do a soft little curve, line it out, and then lift off with a light hand. And I'll do this into each one of these little sections here. All right, so that's beautiful. We have this great foundation happening. And hello in Kentucky, that's exciting. <laughs> Yay, people from all over the United States. We'll see if we have other people that come in from the UK and Australia sometimes, London. A lot of people from China too, but I don't know if they, uh, I don't know, they usually come in in the middle of the night, but that, that makes sense because of the time. <laughs> Maybe the night owls from China will come in. <laughs> so, all right. Now we can go ahead and start to work in our beautiful little palm tree leaves. So I will work in a little bit of this beautiful green. And then also you can add a little bit of a depth to it with some of that brown too, or the mix of the brown, which if you have my paint kit it is that cadmium red and the black. So I'm gonna go ahead and press down into the green We'll start with that first. Maybe add a tiny touch of that brown to give it a little bit of a darker shade in here. And then I'll start with this as my base, basically my center point of each one, and then I'll just pull away from each one of these into the direction of the palm tree. So I do like soft little curves off to the side. Again, the stroke kind of feels like this. So it's kind of like making a parentheses. That's what it feels like. And again, I come from that center line that we made and then I just kind of pull off to the side and kind of pull it down. So come off that side, 
and then just kind of pull down and allow some of those little lines of the leaves. Let me show you a little bit of depth of color here too. So if you want to add in a little bit of that brown, so you can pull that through as well. Actually, I'm gonna do, and you can even do a little bit of black too, which is kind of nice in here. It adds a nice little shadow. But I get the green down first, and then while it's still wet, you just kind of pull through that into that space there. And a little bit more black here. Yeah, so green first, and then start there in the center so that it blends into that darker section in the middle, and then just kind of pull out into the green with those darker shades. And again, I'm gonna start back with my green next. And then these dark lines that we made initially, those are my guides, that really helps. Just kind of pull out into that area. And then I just keep going in the direction. That's why the template's helpful. That reference still being there that shows me what direction I need to take the leaves. So I let that be my guide and I follow into that area there. Now my template's taking me this direction now, so I need to shift a little bit. And so I'll come this direction now. And the same thing here. So up and over, up and over this way. Make sure I'm still in frame. Yes, okay. Important thing is to see the painting at this point. All right, and then over here, still using that wonderful guide of my, see, I can see that line work because we did our template there first, and so I'm seeing that beneath. And then I'm just kind of filling into that shape with the green first. Same thing here. Start at that center and then just make those soft little curves all the way down. And then I will come back in with a little bit of that darker shade. Yeah, looking a little bit light on this side, so I need some of that depth happening in the center. So I'll go ahead and take my same little buddy brush. I'll push back into the black and the brown. And we're gonna basically just kind of repeat the same thing we just did, but I'll do a little bit of an overlap over the top of that green and then that will give me a nice little bit of a shadow happening. Really helps it feel like it has that sense of belonging into the center of the tree where it's growing from the wood there. That's what, that's what that little shadow is helpful for too. As opposed to the green looking like it's kind of floating out into the space. So this basically kind of marries it to that trunk, makes it look like it belongs. And the shadow of this darker color really helps the blending process. So again, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and just repeating that same stroke there. And just taking this all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna have to kind of squat and do my viewpoint. All right, I can see, and I don't like that. Hold on. My lights kind of create this glare, and I get, I can't see it. All right. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay. <laughs> I, need, I had a little bit too much of a light green happening in there, a little pocket. I need to add a bit more shadow, so now I'm good. Okay, so now I'm coming in on this palm tree here. have a great foundation to work from, and I'll start with this green first. Again, still using the little buddy brush. And this little line that we made just a little bit ago, that's going to be my foundation. So I'll just come off of that and do those soft little curves off to the side. And then same thing here on this side. Soft little curves. 
just doing green to start with and keep those strokes light and feathery. Remember to start in the center and then definitely use that outline of the template guide that you still, it's very hard to see from y'all because I painted over it, but it's there and I see it underneath and I'll use that as my guide here to know what direction to take the palm tree leaves in. There's an ant. Okay, got him. <laughs> I'm sorry. And now the ant lovers are like, no! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I didn't want to get bit by an ant. Okay. Uh, that could be a bigger issue. I need to deal with that. Okay. But not now. <laughs> All right. So I've got more green I need to work in here. Let's start from this other section here. Coming off the sides. And then a little bit more off the canvas there. Just go ahead and continue to fill that in. So definitely give that fullness of the palm tree coming off the canvas. And then just keep feathering these out. Now I need to come back in with that depth. So then I'll take my little buddy brush and work back into that. A little bit more black happening here. A little bit more of that black and a little bit of the brown. And so I've got my center line, so I'll just work off of that and do those light, wispy little strokes off to the side through the green. So again, this adds that really nice little bit of depth and shadow into each branch. The other thing you wanna check for as you're doing this is sometimes the bristles can get so full of paint that they start to spread out and get really full and you lose your thin line edge, which is really important right now. So sometimes what I'll have to do is I'll have to come back and really apply some firm pressure as I load up the brush with paint. So you wanna get it back to being very thin on the edge again. So you get those nice little thin lines that come out to make these patterns in here. Again, just still working in that black off to each side. And then same thing here, start from the center, kind of pull that out into the rest of the palm tree. Yay! All right, so we've got our little palm trees done. That's awesome. All right, what next? Need that to set up and dry a little bit. I could work on, I've got some roses, I've got clouds. I'll have these same clouds happening, it's kind of fun. And then, got a fun pattern happening here. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna let this have more set up and dry time. I'm gonna go ahead and work in some clouds up through here. So, let's take Mama Brush, and I'll come in with some white. There's Mama. And let's go ahead and make some cute little clouds. Be just like those. And so I hold the brush like a pencil and I just push straight forward. And as I do, those bristles of the brush will spread out and they'll make little half circles. And so this is just a really fun, very childlike kind of cloud. I just love it. It's one of my most favorite styles of clouds. So I actually really do like the childlike quality of it. And let's have one kind of coming off the canvas. And then we can just kind of lightly feather that out. Soft blend in there. And then let's do a few more here. And clouds are all very unusual and different, so they don't have to be the same size. And then I'll feather this out. All right. 
nice. Okay, so we've got three beautiful clouds. Now we'll work on the pattern work that comes in over the top. So I need my little bit brush again. And let's see here. I want this one. I have a lot of different sizes of little bit. So this guy is good right here. And as an accent, let's do a little bit of this purple. See if my purple, oh good, okay. I didn't know how long that purple had been there. Could have been really old. All right. Now I just added a little bit of water to that because this had actually set up for quite a bit. And so I, I needed to thin it out just a little bit here. You don't normally have to do that. If it's fresh out of the tube, it'll be ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna take my little bit brush and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of twist it into the paint. That'll give me a nice fine point. And then let's do a few of these accents here. So I want just a little hint of that purple coming in through my clouds. And some more up here. Now I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some gold in here. All right, still using a little bit brush and the gold. A little bit of gold here. And I will go ahead and do a quick little line. Just like that. Now I will also do a nice soft blend into the clouds to help blend this out because it's a little bit uh, garish right over the top there. So I want it to be a little bit more of a soft transition happening. So I need a little buddy that's kind of bigger, softer. This one's kind of fluffy like that. So I'm gonna come in with a little bit of white and then I'm gonna do a slight overlap over the top of that color and just repeat the same stroke there so it kind of feels like you're doing that little parentheses. They do that a lot, but it's like a, it feels like a parentheses or a little half circle. And again, just a little bit of an overlay over the top of that color. And then the other part has the white on it so it has that soft blend into the rest of the cloud happening here. So, And I try to hold the brush as much as I can over to the side and I still allow a little bit of the very vibrant color to still remain on the very outer edge. So that's why I say I do a little bit of a soft overlay just on the inside part of that stroke. So I come in from the inside and just softly overlay right over the top. That gives me that soft transition. Especially you wanna work this in while the paint is still wet. And you can kind of lightly feather this out too. Now, let me tell you what I just did. I had, I noticed up here, I had picked up too much of the gold and my brush was not getting that really vibrant white that I wanted, so I did a quick wipe on my paper towel before I'm coming back in with more of just the pure white here. Or you can kind of drag it off on the side of your plate too. Soft blend right over the top. We've got wet paint coming right next to wet paint for that blend, so that's what allows that to happen. And then I wanna softly blend all this in in the center. So I'm gonna take that little buddy brush, little bit of that pure white, and then just kinda crisscross it back and forth, laying it just right on the side of the brush, parallel to the canvas. We do the same thing over here. Wanna make sure this has a nice soft blend on the inside. Just hit it one more time with a little bit of that really nice layer of white over the top. And I had that extra gold come in on this one, so I'm gonna hit it one more time with a nice layer of the white over the top. Awesome! Okay, so we've got our clouds done. Let's go ahead and push in a little rose here. So I want a nice, light, creamy rose. 
kind of going with that neutral color scheme. So I add a little bit of white with a little bit of gold, and I'm just gonna push in a little circle shape here. And it had some wet orange, so it kind of looks peach, and that's okay. That's kind of, that's pretty too. All right, so I'm gonna push in a little bit more of that gold just right over the top. Kind of sweep it back and forth, little half circles. So that will be a rose, believe it or not. <laughs> That'll be a rose. Um, and then I want one more little baby rose happening about right here. So I just kind of push it out into a little tiny baby circle because our little roses just kind of look like little baby circles right now. All right, so that's the first start there. Now let's do the pattern over the top. And for this, come, coming back in with my little bit brush and I'll do a little bit of white just right over the top here. And I'll just kind of sweep this on. Looks like little half circles. And I try to hold the brush as much as I can kind of over to the side as I do this. And again, just kind of sweep that on and little half circle strokes and vary your placement all around the rows. Keep sweeping that all the way around the rows, but also in that circular pattern. And then just work it in all the way towards the center. So that's the first layer. We haven't done the dark shadows yet, so this is just that first white layer. Same thing here, little white, like half circles. Work that all the way around in a circular pattern. All right, so now we need to come in with a dark shadow. And so I'm still going to be using my little bit brush. And we want that neutral color here. So I'll use the brown. And then of course to mix up with our paint kit, that will be the cadmium red and the black. And that will make a brown too. All right, so I've got a little bit brush and I'll do one little tiny dot. It's like almost like a little, kind of just push in, drag it just slightly and then pull off with a light hand. That makes that little center shadow in the middle of the rose. And then I just do a few more, just really tiny little half circles. It's basically just kind of creating that little bit of shadow that happens. And do the same thing on the little one. Again, a little tiny brown spot right in the center. Just kind of push and lift off with a light hand. And then I'll just do a few more of these little shadows in here. All right, so we've got two cute little roses now. And then while I went in Rome here, I've got my little bit brush again, and I'm still with it in these uh, little dark colors off to the side, pushing through those. So I'll do a little bit of this decorative work that I'm seeing on my model that I have in here. So I'll do a quick little twist here into the paint. This is my black and my brown. And then I'm gonna make a little thin line that'll come up. And then another one just kind of up to the side. And then I do little diagonal lines off to each side. So it's just kind of some fun little decorative like feathers or plant life that kind of, it's just fun and ornate. You can absolutely just, if this is not your thing, if this gets to be a little bit too, too much. Some people like the simplicity of just the van without all this decorative doodad stuff happening which is totally fine. So I'm gonna add a few of these here, and then I want a little bit of a soft gray. So I'll add a little bit of white to what I was doing. Take my little uh, bit brush, kind of twirl it into the paint, and then I'm gonna come down this time. And then I'll do the same thing, little diagonal lines off to each side. And 
off to the side on this side too. And you can add a little highlight of white. I need to go ahead and thin my brush out again. So a little touch of white too. And just basically overlay that. So it's going into that light gray. Because that's what happens when it mixes with that darker color. It kind of takes it to that light gray. All right, some fun little details there. And then if you want, you can add a few little leaves here too. I'm gonna still use the little bit brush. And I like the use of the turquoise here. It's a really pretty contrast against this beautiful orange fan. So I'm gonna come in with my little bit brush and the turquoise. And then I think I wanna add just a few little leaves here. So the basic shape of the leaf Will look like you make a little parentheses and another parentheses and then those connect and you just fill those in now i've got a lot of wet paint here so i'm going to be very gentle and just barely lay mine on over the top Let's see i'll do a few more up here All right, so that's fun. I think I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Sometimes you can just keep going and going and going. All right, so we have some fun little decorative elements happening on the top of the van. And then I also had a few fun little things on the top of the surfboard in my model. These are also optional. You do not have to put that much detail into these. But well, I'll probably just do one of the little feathers. So I'm going to use my little bit brush again and just some black paint. And so I did this fun little feather here, this design. So I'll, I'll do a little line just like that. And then here on the outsides, I'll make little diagonal strokes that come down on the sides. So there's a little feather that you can do just for fun. And then a few just little wavy lines. So again, optional. <gasps> Yay! Ness is on! <laughs> you have to let me know if my dad's there too. All right, now I'm gonna do my cute little flamingo here. And, oh, you know what? Let me do his beak first. And here's why, because his beak is orange. And if I do the black first, I was about to outline it, but I don't wanna do that, because if I do the black first, then it will make his beak very muddy. So we want bright, really pretty bright orange. All right, so I've got my little bit brush here and bright orange, and I want this really pretty little bright orange beak happening. So let's go ahead and do that. There that is. And then let's give him a little white face too. All right, so a little bit brush again, white paint. And we'll do a little section of white here. I'm gonna have you start with just a tiny little section of like a little rectangle of this. And then we'll do one soft little curve. That's where the little eye is going to go. A little bit of white in here. I also have a fun little dot trick I'll show you for the eye. So I need to use my handle. So here's my handle and I'm gonna to touch down into some black paint. You want this to be super tiny. So you'll take your handle, you'll dip into the black and this is how we make fun little dots. So there's my fun little dot. And then with a really light hand, we'll just touch down, ta-da! Cute little eye. And if you want your eye to be even tinier, then I would recommend hunting down like, like a little nail or something like that. You can do that too around your house. So my flamingo has a big, beautiful eye. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, now what we want to do is, let's see, we have, we're kind of down to outline work. I want to make sure my flamingo has legs. Those are important. So I do want those legs to be as straight as possible. My type A friends, you are welcome to get a ruler. Just make sure your paint's all dry before you do. I am actually going to use my little buddy brush to help me. Let's see, I'm trying to find one I really like here. Is this a good one? Yeah, this is pretty good. All right, so the good thing about Little Buddy, actually I changed my mind, I like this one. Okay, so here is Little Buddy. He's got a little line edge here and I'm gonna go ahead and push this down into the black paint. All right, nice thin line edge. So as you load up your brush, you wanna make sure and apply some firm pressure. This will give you that nice thin line. We really need that. So sometimes what happens is your brush gets filled up with paint, makes the bristles spread out, and that's really crucial. You wanna make sure that as you're filling the brush with paint, firm pressure, especially if you're trying to do a line edge, so that you have that nice thin line on the end of the brush. All right, so I need to do my little lines here for the legs. Now my surfboard is fairly dry. Let me show you a little trick here. You can use your ruler and you can just kind of position it just like this. I hope this is pretty, pretty stable. All right, so I'm gonna have to just do a real gentle hand, but basically, is that straight? Sorry to get in the way. Um, let's go ahead and just follow along the edge here. See how that's a really nice little cheat? So you can actually follow along the line of the ruler. Here's the only trick though, is that whenever you go to do a second line, you just wanna make sure that this is completely dry. So see how I got all that black off of the ruler? You don't wanna keep doing line work everywhere because then you'll mark up your canvas somewhere. Not that I know from it. <laughs> so yeah, experience is sometimes the best teacher. Yeah, that's happened. All right, so we've got one leg and then I'm gonna do one that's going to have a little, you can't see, but you know, you know have a little, that goes up. All right, so I've got my little, I've got a line that's gonna go down this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and not use the ruler because I just want that little leg going that way. And then I wanna go across. And then a little curve put here. And then I want a little kneecap on the, let me go here. So I've got my little bit brush again, and then let's do a little tiny kneecap here. You know, I don't even know if that's what it is, but I'm gonna give this little cute flamingo a little tiny kneecap. I don't know what they call it on a flamingo, but. All right, so now we've got legs. That's exciting. All right, and now I need to do detail work that comes in around my flamingo. See how, it's like it's all coming together. <laughs> Yay, from the UK. You know, you're gonna have to tell me how to say your name, but I don't know how you're gonna tell me that. <laughs> and thank you for saying it's fabulous. I always wanna say hi, but I'm not sure how to say your name. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to, maybe maybe if I go to Google and I'll, if I put in your name, it'll give me the phonetic pronunciation of it. So yeah. So I always say hi, hi to the UK. <laughs> All right, so I've got my little bit brush and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little twist here into the black paint. And then let's see, I'm gonna to start to work around this. Little tiny details are happening. So you wanna make sure and stabilize your hand as you're doing this. Like I'm resting it on my easel or my wood platform here. Another little thing that you can do is I always tell people to rest the weight of their hand on their pinky. Sometimes that works too, and that helps stabilize your hand so that your fingers can do other strokes too. Or you can also kind of rest on your other hand just like this, and then that can help stabilize your hand as well. But we do have some tiny lines we have to work in with the paint. And then another little trick, this is probably what all of y'all are gonna do anyway, is a Sharpie. So you can just get a Sharpie, but make sure you wait till the paint dries. That's really important or else it'll just kill the Sharpie. But if everything's dry, you can come back in with your Sharpie and just completely line all of this. 
And that's actually the easiest thing to do. Because this can be a little stressful for beginners. They, they don't care much for this process. And then especially if you have shaky hands, which you know I know a lot of women that come and paint, they love to paint, but they end up having that shaky hand thing. So Sharpie is a really good tool too. All right, so now we have that beautiful outline around there. And let's see, I want to continue outlining on the rest of my little van here, but I want to make it a little bit more subtle, not the really harsh, dark black. So I'll come in with a charcoal gray. And so let's see, and I also want to do longer lines at this point too. So I want to use my mama brush. So here is mama. And then I want a little bit of white with my black. So I'll push those two together. I'm going to mix up a charcoal gray. And this is where I want that really nice thin line on the edge of my brush. See how it's really nice and thin there? Thank you. <laughs> I had an orange van growing up. I had an orange everything growing up. It was so weird. <laughs> Got an orange house, an orange van, an orange lawnmower. Like, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> we had orange everything. All right, so now I'm going to take this beautiful charcoal gray. We're going to take it all the way around. When you have really long lines like this to deal with, it's actually so much easier to do it with the longer line of the brush. So I get as big of a brush as I can and let that long line edge of the brush work with me. Also working in a horizontal pattern is also the easiest. So that's the easiest way to get control over the top as well. So even if you have to turn your canvas a little bit, you can, that makes that process a little bit easier. I'm going to have this dark charcoal happening around my surfboard. And then same thing here on this side. And then again here. So I'll use this as long as I can. It gets to be a little tight in some areas. So I may have to switch. Again, this is just a dark charcoal color. And I used white and black to do this. You had pink everything. I think <laughs> I think I would have enjoyed that more. <laughs> that would have been really fun. Well, my brother may not have liked that very much, but all right, so now we have a long line happening here, long line happening here. All right, and then I've got, it, it starts to get pretty curvy. So, oops, and that's too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears to a much smaller brush here. So I still want my charcoal, I've got my little bit brush. Let's do a little bit of that white, a little bit of that black. Get a nice fine point here. I go ahead and twist into the paint. There's my nice fine point, just like that. And then I will go ahead and curve around this bumper. All right, and then around the tire. And then we got another tire happening there. And then another bumper happening here. And then here's another line here. I hope I got them all. Oh, I have one right there. I missed it. Oops, I'll get it. That happens. That's my puppy dog, Ira. She's in the room. I always like to tell people to breed my dog. Some of y'all who have been here with me a lot go, we know your dog, okay? <laughs> but my dog is a blue lacy, which is the official dog of Texas that we found that out the other day. So this is pretty exciting. And since I'm actually from there, I have 
some pride with that. I think that's pretty exciting. We didn't know what she was for the longest time when we finally got it all narrowed down. Blue Lacy, official dog of Texas. All right, so we're gonna do one more line of charcoal because I forgot to do that earlier. So boom, there it goes all the way across. Got my mama brush again. And so I take this all the way across here. And then on this side, I'll come back from the other direction so that I don't run into my surfboard. And then you can, if you want, you can line these out if you want. Or you can do these with your Sharpie as well. Our little windows here. Make sure you don't get out into the white space. I'm gonna switch to, oops, there's my water. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. Little buddy. Get a nice flat line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and firm this up a little bit. Just doing one more little reference here. And there. All right, and then I wanna do quick little highlights of white over the top of my windows. So I've got my little bit brush again and some white. And so you can do like little squigglies. So just kind of wiggle it back and forth. So it just kind of gives you that little bit of reflective light over the top, just a little reference to that. You can also do little sketches of white it's almost like making little tiny dashes. All right, let's see here. Um, yum, yum, yum. Okay, so I've got these fun little decorative patterns that I can do at the bottom. So I am going to use my little buddy brush again and the gray again. All right, and if you want to use your ruler, you certainly can. I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand these on. So I've got a little mix of my white and my black. Push that back and forth. Check your edge, make sure it's nice and thin. And then I'm gonna make a thin line that just goes right across here. This of course is definitely optional, but it's just kind of a fun decorative pattern. Take this across. Now I've got those in position, and then after that, I'll place on fun little diagonal strokes. So I'll start in the center here, and I'll do one going up. And then I'll just repeat it here on the other side. So in the center, I go to one side and then to the other. And then diagonal, diagonal. And then on this side, so in the center, it kind of looks like you make an X. And then you take the diagonal up and then down and just kind of repeat. And then there, there, I got one more. All right, so just kind of a fun little extra design there. All right, then our final detail, it looks like, I think I've got almost everything, lettering. Okay, so here's what I recommend. Um, always let it completely set up and dry. And then I always tell beginners to go ahead and use their pencil to map it out, especially if you're going to attempt to write the whole thing, life's a beach 
because that can be very long and you could actually end up with just life's A <laughs> and then you're just running off the canvas and you run out of room. So the painted word always gets so much bigger than, especially when you write it with a pencil. So it really helps to give you a guide, check your spelling, all kinds of good stuff. So mine is still a little bit wet, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some lettering here for you today. Uh, for the sake of time and space, I'll probably just go ahead and write love on mine today. And because we all need love, yay, love. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a fun little L right here. And of course mine is digging into the paint. So I am committed. <laughs> so uh, if you're at home and you're doing this, then of course you definitely want that to set up and dry so it gives you the forgiveness to rework it if it doesn't quite work out with pencil first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit brush. I want mine to be a little bit bigger than what I had. And so here's a little bit and then I'll use a black and I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little twist here into the paint. Make sure and twist it out into a nice fine point. All right, there's my awesome little bit brush all loaded up, ready to go. And then I'll go ahead and follow my strokes here that I've already got down with my pencil. And this is also where that little pinky trick works well. It's kind of like the kickstand on a bike. So it helps stabilize your hand while you do the rest of that stroke there. Or training wheels more like it actually. That would be the better metaphor. Still got range of motion while you got a little bit of help. That's what my pinky's doing right now. I'll just take this all the way around. Just watch where you put your pinky. Sometimes you tap it into wet paint and then you spread paint around. I've done that before, so you gotta be careful. And then I have a little bit of dry brush happening, but I actually really like the way that looks. And there are fonts that actually just do that on purpose. So we're gonna just go with that. And a little, yeah, there, top of my O. All right, yay. Okay, so I think we are completely done. All we have to do now is sign your masterpiece. And you can use your little bit brush for that. Or you can also do a Sharpie. So you can do a teeny tiny little signature here. I want to make sure this is dry, and it is, so I'll do a tiny little signature. It's really hard to paint that small, so it's a lot easier to go ahead and sometimes use your Sharpie for that. But yes, that's it. We are so done. This looks so awesome. All right. So yes, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. And let me give you a little recap of what we have going on. So I have all of these little templates that help you. Okay, I've got the van, the surfboard, the flamingo, the palm tree. We've got paint, we got brushes, we have all kinds of fun stuff. So it's on our website, tipsyartist.com. So y'all can go there and shop to your heart's delight and have fun painting with me. But anyway, y'all have a beautiful rest of the day and we will see you tomorrow, tomorrow again at noon. So again, just be fabulous and have a fabulous day. Mm-hmm.